Prakat, your um, talk today was largely about uh, throwing them in at the deep end. Yeah. Can you, in just in a few words, just explain the principles behind that? It was an attempt to help learning and development people find a way to counteract the traditional way of teaching. Traditionally, we want to present a whole bunch of information so everybody's very thoroughly prepared, and then we give them an activity in which they prove to themselves and everybody that they have been thoroughly prepared and they know the stuff. And what I'm trying to suggest is that a more efficient and actually more respectful to the learner approach would be to give them a challenge that has within it links to optional information. So they can look at the information for help if they want. They can also just plunge in and sink or swim if they want. It's their choice. They choose how much information they get. They choose how much challenge and how much frustration they get. Do you um, think that that message is getting through? Or is it being overwhelmed by the fact that there is so much uh, PowerPoint, rapid development <laughs> tools out there that you can just throw together um, the fact, fact, fact question? Uh, type e learning too easily now? I'll dodge that question and say okay. <laughs> that you could actually use the rapid tools differently. And you could design a, start with an activity, yeah. such as a scenario, my favorite, <laughs> if it's appropriate, and use those little tabs up there that link to external information and to have that provide the, fix the optional information. Right. I do think that we do have a mindset of convert a presentation to an online yeah. course by tacking on some knowledge checks. Yeah. One of the themes of this year's learning technologies is definitely games and gamification in learning. Um, do you see a parallel with what um, you've been talking about today? Yeah, because the sort of throw them into an activity, they struggle a little if they want. Mm -hmm. They can ask for help. It's just like a game where I enter the dungeon and I try to grab the right tool and maybe I don't and I click on the help screen to find out what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> it's very much like that where we're learning by doing and we're learning by making mistakes. We are feeling challenged and therefore feeling engrossed. Yes, it just doesn't have scores and badges and stuff. No, but, but that, that underlying principle that games are full of that, aren't they? You get yes. killed all the time. Yes. You keep on dying. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you don't mind. You come back and try again. Yes. And you learn a lot by, by doing that. And so the principle, yes, is, is the same, I guess. Yeah, and I'd like to see that, that understanding of how adults work yeah. be transferred into the rest of learning and development so that we realize that we don't have to feed them very carefully every little bit of information that they can be trusted to plunge into something, recognize their knowledge gaps, fill those gaps by looking, pulling the information that they need. And finally, you've got a book coming out shortly, I believe. I do. What's that all about? <laughs> um, it is a book on action mapping, sort of expanded. Um, also, it goes through the steps of action mapping and it makes sure, or at least I try to make clear, that it doesn't apply just to e-learning but to all forms of training in the workplace. So I go in quite a bit into analyzing the performance problem, identifying whether training will actually solve it, if training will solve the problem, what's the best type of training, how can we design that, and make that training focused on activities, learning by doing, rather than learning through a presentation and a knowledge check. Excellent, thank you. Thank you.